Hi, Dallas Holm here. I just want to let you know that the audiobook, Words of Hope and Comfort, is now available. Visit us on our website, dallashome.com, for all pertinent information. This is a really nice project. In fact, we're going to give you a little sneak preview. I read some of the chapters of this book, oh, sometime back in a concert, and you can kind of get an idea of what it sounds like with me narrating the book. I think you'll really enjoy it. There's some beautiful lyric videos that will be available as well accompanying the book. They're free. You can just go out there and view the videos that are tied to the chapters in the book. Very, very nicely done. Words of Hope and Comfort audiobook now available. Thanks. Back in the late 70s, I had the privilege to go elk hunting up on the Grand Mesa outside of Grand Junction, Colorado. I suppose next to my love for the Lord and my wife and family, there are a few, if any, things I enjoy more than the great outdoors. I love to fish, hunt, backpack, and explore as much of God's marvelous creation as I can. So the chance to go by horseback up into the snowy mountains of Colorado on a great hunting adventure was enough to keep me awake at night, at least when I wasn't dreaming about bull elk. The trip was all I imagined and more, which I would not have thought possible. In a veritable snow-covered winter wonderland, we were camped out in a tent at almost 10,000 feet. The beaver pond right next to us provided us with some tasty trout at mealtime. This was the stuff dreams are made of, at least the dreams of those who love the outdoors. I'll not share the story of the elk hunt itself, for as it turned out, that was not the most memorable moment of the adventure. Though I was successful in that endeavor, harvesting an elk, it was another experience God gave me which ultimately was cataloged and stored higher on the shelves of my memory banks. One afternoon, about the third day of the hunt, I had hiked, climbed, and crawled up to a high vantage point from which I could glass a great distance. Perched on a piece of rock protruding out from a steep cliff, I could see down to the valley below, a hillside across, and woods all around. Suddenly, as a mother would pull the blanket up over her sleeping child, God pulled in a blanket of clouds from the valley behind and below me. In mere moments, everything I had just been observing was gone in an instant. There I was on that piece of rock just above the bank of clouds. The valley below was gone. The hillside across was completely shrouded and not a tree in sight anywhere. It really was reminiscent of one of those scenes from a movie where someone has ascended into the clouds of heaven alone and wondering. I was both thrilled and somewhat apprehensive. Thrilled to witness such a sight, which I've never seen before or since, and apprehensive as I considered the prospects of making my way back down to camp with minimal visibility. Then I saw something far off in the distance. It was a mountain range. Jagged, snow-capped peaks thrust their way up through the same bank of clouds I was looking down upon, a reference point. And at this point, it was the only other object in my entire world that wasn't cloaked in clouds. I tried to imagine how much taller those mountains were than my vantage point and how far away they must be. I wondered how long a journey it would take to reach them and how difficult it would be under the canopy of such thick cloud cover. I learned later that the mountains I had seen were almost 100 miles away. In the midst of all my wanderings, just as suddenly as the clouds had rolled in, they rolled right back out. Once again, I could see everything around and below me. I could still see the mountain range far off, and it struck me that I hadn't noticed it previously. It took the covering of all else to fix my attention on an impressive reference point. Some years later, this experience found its way into a song. I knew life had its valleys, never thought that it would not be so, but even if they'd told me, I never would have thought they'd be this low. I've stood upon the mountain, looked across to higher peaks and more, but the only way to reach them is to journey through the lowly valley floor. Approximately 10 years after the mountain adventure I just described to you, I would embark on another journey. This time the clouds would be over me and the valley would be my vantage point. In July of 1987, my wife Linda was diagnosed with cancer. Multifocal infiltrating ductal, ductal carcinoma, they called it. Cancer was the only word I really heard from the doctor following the biopsy. Linda had detected a lump in her breast that was accompanied by occasional discomfort. The doctor tried to assure us before the biopsy that these things are ra rarely malignant. However, as he came through the door into the waiting room following the procedure, I sensed in his countenance a more ominous pronouncement was about to be offered. And it was. In rather stoic, clinical fashion, he explained what he had found and what may lie ahead. I remember thinking that it seemed our lives had just come to a screeching halt and I had no idea what the next step was going to be. I walked from the waiting room to the room they would bring her to after recovery. I tried to hold my emotions together as I passed people in the hallway. This is what outdoorsmen of the adventuresome kind do. 
However, when I arrived at her room, I went into the bathroom, shut the door, and sobbed like a baby. What would happen now? Would Linda be all right? Was she going to live, or was she going to die? I'd certainly heard of cancer, prayed for people with cancer, and had known some who died of cancer, but I really didn't know anything about it at all. But together, we would learn. All the details pertaining to the disruption of our lives at this time are not necessary to discuss here. Linda did have surgery, underwent chemo, lost all her beautiful hair, and lived for many months in that state of fatigue and sickness that a chemo protocol usually presents. Our lives seemed to be moving in slow motion as we walked day by day in the valley of the unknown. We said at one point it seemed our lives had been reduced to a series of five-minute increments as we waited for t test results, calls from nurses, appointment schedules, and so on. One evening in the midst of this difficult and seemingly endless journey, I went out into my studio and wrote a song. When it was completed, I asked Linda to come out and give it a listen. I placed a pair of headphones on her beautiful bald head, sat at the piano, and as she stood beside me, I, behind me, I sang the words to heal me. She listened to the first verse, which I've already shared with you. Then, in the midst of our slow motion journey, I sang for her the second verse. How long have I been traveling? Days or years? Sometimes I just don't know. And how deep is this valley? And how many more miles must I go? My body's grown weary, seems my strength has all but slipped away. Oh God, you've got to help me. Place your healing hand on me today. This wasn't just a song, this was a prayer. A desperate cry from deep within to lead us through and out of this valley of the shadow of death. Heal me, touch me with your love. Heal me, send your spirit from above. Hear me, help me, Lord, I pray. Jesus, come and make me whole today. Linda has often testified that in that moment of hearing Heal Me for the first time, she realized that when you go through these valley experiences, you take everyone you love right along with you. The journey now has continued for almost three decades. The cancer has had to be readdressed along the way with more surgeries, radiation, and various treatments. Linda enjoys great health. Once she wondered if she would live to see our children graduate from school. We've seen both our daughter, Jennifer, and our son, Jeffrey. Graduate, marry, have children, our five grandchildren. Some would say it's been a sad journey. We would disagree. For in our weakness, his strength is perfected. We hardly agree with Paul. My grace is sufficient for you, for power is, perf is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may dwell in me. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. I've been on the mountaintop and I've been in the valley, both literally and figuratively. Some would say, surely life above the clouds is to be desired over life beneath them. I would respond by saying, life is best lived and appreciated wherever God in his infinite love and mercy has sovereignly placed you. Oswald Chambers said, don't complain, you're of no use where you are, for you are certainly of no use where you're not. I love that. After all, what are the clouds? Nahum says, clouds are the dust beneath his feet. Therefore, clouds are the very evidence of his presence. We know from scripture that he goes before us. He is by our side. He is our rear guard. He undergirds us and he sings over us. I like to say, he's got you covered. Dear soul, are you in a dark valley just now? Overcast by a cloud bank that rolled in suddenly? Do you long to gain a lofty perch above the nebula, perchance to gain some distant point of reference? Be encouraged. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Psalm 34, 18, his grace is sufficient and he is faithful. O oh God, I know you're faithful, leading me each step every day, but sometimes in the valley, I just forget you've often passed this way. The path is steep and narrow, seems this upward climb will never stop, so I'm holding on to you, Lord. And in your strength, I know I'll make the top. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, 4. I knew life had its valleys Never thought that it 
would not be so But even if they told me I never would have thought they'd be this low I've stood upon the mountain Looked across to higher peaks and more But the only is to journey through the lonely valley floor. How long have I been traveling? Days or years, sometimes I just don't And how many more miles must I go? My body's growing Seems my strength has all but slipped away Oh God, you've got to help me Place your Heal me, touch me with your love. Heal me, send your spirit from above and. Jesus, come and make me whole today. Oh God, I know you're faithful. Sometimes in the valley I just forget you've often passed this way The path is steep and narrow Seems this upward climb will never stop So I'm holding on to you in your strength, I know how late the time. Heal me, touch me with your love. Heal me, send your spirit from above. And Yeah, 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 yeah.